Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Public TV News. You are watching Special Investigation with Amir Abhi. Our today's program is about immigration consultancy services and immigration business setup. In this program, we will show you about success story of most young guest entrepreneur who belongs to Canada, but she is working in UAE. We will also tell you that how you can get immigration services for US as well as how you can start immigration business consultancy services. What can be the best business plan for this? What can be the best location? And how much maximum investment is required for immigration business setup? After startup, how you can promote your business? And we will also tell you that what are some most profitable business in the world and business which can be started with very low budget and what are some best secure investments and home based or part time business and many more. Today, we invited a youngest and most talented entrepreneur, the CEO of Step Global, Ms. Priya Malik. Welcome to Public TV, Ms. Priya. Thank you so much for inviting me for Public TV and giving me the opportunity to speak with you today about my business. Thank you very much. Ms. Priya, you are the most youngest and talented entrepreneur. Can you please share your success story with us? Sure. Um, we came to Dubai about five years ago. And when we first came here, it was sort of an experimental project for us. So we weren't sure exactly whether we would succeed or if there was actually a demand in the market. At the time we came here, there weren't very many other immigration consulting companies. Nowadays, there's a lot of different ones. But when we first arrived, we were sort of the first. And we were the first that were doing um, a focus on US immigration. And so it was very experimental for us. But um, we've learned that over the past five years, we've had a lot of success. And so we're, we feel very lucky and thankful to Dubai for giving us the opportunity to succeed here. Wonderful, Ms. Priya. So there are many people who have dreamed to go to US. So can you please tell us your complete services about immigration consultancy? Sure. So when we first started, we were focusing mainly on US immigration and specifically the US EB-5 Immigrant Investor Program. And I, as a US lawyer, I do specialize in US immigration. Um, we've now expanded into doing accessing the US through business ownership. So we consult on other various U.S. investor visas like the E2 and L1 and we now have over 30 global immigration programs that we consult on. So we can essentially have a client come in and we can sit down with them and create a strategic plan so that they could find the program that's right for them and for their families and that meets their needs. So whether it's that they have a specific budget in mind for investment or they have a specific place in the world they're planning to go and to migrate to, or a specific plan for their children, we can help them with that plan and give them what they need in terms of migration. That's great, Ms. Priya. So can you please tell us that now if somebody wants to start this business, immigration consultancy business, from where he can start? In the UAE specifically, it's, it's a very interesting market to be in because the UAE is still a developing and growing country. And so there are a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of gaps that people can come in and fill with various business ideas. I think if someone wanted to start a business that's similar to what we've done here in terms of consulting or immigration consulting, um, the most important thing is to be well educated and knowledgeable in the area that you're consulting in, to have the right knowledge available to give to people so you're able to give them adequate information. And also within the UAE, it's important to be um, financially stable in order to open a business. Starting a business here, becoming licensed, licensing and compliance is a very important part of being an entrepreneur in the UAE. And so to have the financial capability to become licensed and to start your business is very important as well. Okay, Ms. Priya, can this business be started in India and Pakistan? What is the market ratio of in developing country for this business? Of course, I think starting any type of business in developing countries like India or Pakistan, it's a great opportunity because, as I said, these markets are still developing. Um, they still have a lot of room for growth. And businesses like immigration consulting, for example, there's always going to be a space in the market for that. Um, there's always going to be people who want to move on or to expand their own opportunities and find new places to be globally. And so immigration consulting is a great type of business to open and especially in developing countries. That's great. So how much investment is required to start up this business? If we're talking about the UAE um, and opening a business here in this industry, I think to come prepared with at least 
around 200,000 AED would be sufficient to start. I always tell people that it's important to start within your means. So, um, you know, start at where you can financially and scale your growth as you go on and scale your growth as your company becomes more successful. So just to start up in terms of an office space, maybe yourself and one other staff, as well as licensing and compliance, to have about 200,000 AED in your pocket would be a good start for you. Okay, and what can be the profit ratio? This industry is very interesting because um, the profit ratio really varies. It can be situations where you're making um, less money and there are situations where this industry can be very lucrative and it depends on a lot of different things. It depends on the demand, which is often determined by the political nature of what's going on in the world. It depends on the economy at that specific time. Um, and it also depends on the types of programs that you're offering people. Obviously, when people are doing investment programs, there's room for more profit. And uh, when you're doing other programs that are um, skilled worker or things like that, there's less profit. But either way, whatever profit you're making, it's a very fulfilling industry to be in because you're helping people achieve their dreams and their goals. Okay, Ms. Priya, what can be the best business plan for this business? Like what type of office should be there? What type of location we required? So please just. So again, I always tell people that when you're starting a business, especially a business like this, where it's very experimental and you're not sure what the outcome is going to be, to start within your means and scale your growth. So that means in terms of, um, for example, when we first came to the UAE, we weren't licensed right away in a free zone that's as expensive as DMCC, for example. Um, different free zones has different licensing requirements, different costs associated. And so we started in a free zone which had more flexibility. It had flexibility for a payment plan, for example. And um, our office was much smaller as well. We even started in a shared office space, whereas now we have our own office and it's fairly large. We have staff. We grew from um, myself and a business partner and we grew from that to a staff of about 10 people at the moment. So um, definitely it depends on what your budget is. It depends on how much money you have to start up, but you want to make sure that whatever you're doing in terms of licensing, where you're choosing to be, how large your office is, how many people you're hiring, start small and then scale your growth that way. That's good, Ms. Priya. Now, please tell us that if somebody wants to get this immigration consultancy services, one, he can contact to you. But is there any other consultancy services where he can get these services? Right. So there are definitely a lot of consulting firms that are offering immigration services, and those come at different price points. Um, there are often people that come to me that have gotten a price quote that's much less than perhaps what we might give them. I think what's important to recognize is when you're doing an immigration application or when you're providing people with information, um, the quality of that information and the quality of the expertise of the people you're working with is more important than perhaps the cost, unless there's a huge cost differential. And so, for example, we have a track record of 100%. We've never had a rejection. We've never experienced a rejection on any of the applications we've done. Um, even in our skilled worker programs, everyone we put through gets chosen and drawn for skilled worker, for example, for the Canadian Federal Express Entry Program. And so even though sometimes costs may be higher in terms of fees, it's important to go with a firm or a, or a consulting agency that knows what they're doing, they're professional, they're experienced, and they have a track record of success. I think that's more important than thinking about um, the cost of what you're paying. Okay, Ms. Priya, can you please share some best advertising and marketing techniques for getting customers? Sure. I think that nowadays, with any type of business, um, digital marketing and online marketing is very important. So that's sort of the way we're going in terms of marketing. Even over the past five years since we came here, our marketing strategies have changed a lot. So some things I could suggest would be Google AdWords, ensuring that you have a good website with SEO compatibility, um, social media marketing such as Instagram marketing, Facebook campaigns, SMS marketing, WhatsApp marketing, as well as um, we still do go sometimes towards traditional means, for example, print advertising and PR, 
or we even sometimes do hold seminar events and conferences where people can actually meet us face to face and talk to us and see what we're about and see what our professionalism is. So a combination of all of those things, both traditional techniques of marketing as well as more um, contemporary techniques of marketing are all very important. Okay, Ms. Priya, you are the most youngest entrepreneur and you have very good ideas. Can you please tell us that some most profitable business in the world? I think there is a lot of room for profitable businesses and they're often things that people don't usually think about. So for example, one thing that I would suggest in terms of profit is real estate development. It's not something that everyone can get into, but if it is something you can get into where you can develop real estate, whether it means renovations or actually building from ground up construction, that can be a very profitable business. Um, if you're able to get investors and in financing and then you're able to improve a property and gain profit from that, that could be very profitable. The second business I would suggest would be import-export and manufacturing. Um, if you're able to have a product that you can manufacture and distribute globally, you can also become very successful. And for that, you would have to see what there's a demand for, where you're planning to distribute these products globally, are there specific geographic locations, and if you're able to pinpoint those things, then you could also be very successful in manufacturing. Import and export also, aside from manufacturing, just all on its own, just the distribution side of it can also be very profitable and lucrative. If you're able to form exclusive negotiations and agreements with certain products and certain companies where you have exclusivity to distribute, import and export um, those products globally, you can also be very successful with that. So is there any more business? Another business that I would suggest, and it's very popular in um, countries like the US, Canada, and the UK, and it's becoming more popular also in the Middle East and developing countries, are franchise businesses. And so that's something that a lot of people don't think about. The startup costs are often low. You can get a franchise or start your own franchise for quite a low investment startup and you can grow that. So you can grow it to eventually own multiple franchises in different industries or even in the same industry. And if you're able to scale your business that way in the franchise industry, you can also actually be very profitable and lucrative and successful that way. So is there any more business? Um, another business I would suggest would be, well, my business, which is consulting and um, not just immigration consulting. So when I say my business, I'm saying consulting and investment consulting. Um, when people are trusting you with their funds and they're trusting you to sort of guide them in terms of making investments, you obviously benefit from that as well. And with uh, consulting businesses in terms of investment consulting, you don't need a high volume of clientele. If you even have um, certain clientele that's specific and um, a few people or a few companies that you work with, you can actually have a very successful business that way um, without having to have a huge volume of clients. So is there any more business because we want to get more and more ideas from you? Okay. Um, I think there's, there's two things that I, I want to say generally as well, two remaining things in terms of having a successful business. Um, the first is to look for certain trends. So nowadays, for example, there's a trend towards health and wellness. And so if you're able to have any kind of business in that industry that's on trend and that's becoming sort of current globally like health and wellness, whether it's in food and beverage health and wellness, or whether it's in fitness, health and wellness, you can become very successful that way. And finally, the other thing that I always tell people is that if you have a passion for what you're doing, whatever business you're in, whatever industry you're in, you can be successful. Because with that passion, you can help your business grow. And so it's not specified to specific industry, but it's specified to what your mindset is in the business that you're starting. Ms. Priya, these were some most profitable business in the world, but there are many people who doesn't have investment. So can you please tell us some low budget investment business? Seven, low investment. Okay, um, well one thing that I had mentioned as well are franchise businesses. So 
These are businesses that have already been set up by a, a head corporation and they franchise different locations out to various people. And because of that, you're able to gain a lot of business knowledge, you're able to take on um, the business processes from the head corporation as well as their business plans and their support to become successful. But the startup costs are often very low. Sometimes they can be as low as $50,000 or even lower than that. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity in the franchise space to have a low startup cost and to start your own business. Something else that I would also suggest is um, anything that does um, has to do with your own expertise and your own skills. So for example, a consulting basis. Um, whether you are um, freelancing or whether you're opening your own office as a consultant, if you are skilled and you have expertise in a certain area, whatever that area may be, you're able to provide that knowledge to people for a fee and that could also be a very low um, cost business. Another thing that I might suggest is um, something e-commerce based. It does require you to have costs in terms of starting up a website or having a website developed that's fairly dynamic. So that cost is there. But the cost can be fairly low if you are able to plan your business model correctly. So for example, if you're able to, instead of keeping inventory in-house, if you're able to sort of outsource or keep inventory outsourced until orders come in, that can lower your overhead costs and therefore lower your overall startup costs as well. That's great. So is there any more? Um, any other businesses actually that are based on commission, so any kind of sales in terms of, let's take for example real estate business, uh, real estate sales, or um, any other kind of sales business where you're making commission, your overhead costs with that would be fairly low as well. It may take a lot of hard work to make the profit and it may take a lot of hard work to build your reputation in any kind of industry like that, but once you do, you've um, started up with low cost, but you're able to make quite a lot of profit if you are able to do it correctly. Okay, Ms. Priya, there are many people who are rich and who have very good investment. So can you please share some best investment tips? This is an interesting question because, um, so Warren Buffett, who's one of the most uh, wealthiest men in the world, he once said that he would rather um, make his coffee at home in the morning and take that instead of, for example, going to a coffee shop every morning, which a lot of people do to get their coffee. And that, that 90 cents of a difference in what he's spending on a daily basis would make all the difference in the world in terms of his net worth and his wealth. And so I think any kind of investment you can make, whether you are making a salary of a dollar or whether you're making a salary of a hundred dollars, um, if you can put away some portion of that in any type of investment, then you'll be able to multiply your net worth and multiply your wealth. Something that I always tell people is I always think that real estate, whether you're investing in actual tangible real estate or whether you're investing in something like a REIT, which is a real estate investment trust, um, real estate is always a great investment because you have a tangible asset at your fingertips. And real estate markets go up and down. There, there are waves to that. But if you can purchase when real estate is low and you can hold that, you're always going to have some value in your property. It's rarely going to be the case where your property comes to a zero value. So if you're able to hold that property, you're able to put your money away in a safe place and hopefully make some capital appreciation or profit on that as well. Um, another thing that I would suggest investing in, obviously, are um, the stock market, but you have to be very, very um, diligent about what you're investing in. You have to see that what you're investing in is a good investment, which is the same with any investment. It's important to do your due diligence. Um, it is possible to lose, but it is also possible to multiply your investment um, quite significantly. So that would be a good investment as well. Okay, Ms. Priya, we also want to get information about some home-based or part-time business. So can you please tell us? 
This is a great question because nowadays a lot of people talk about um, work-life balance, especially for females who are working, who have a family at home, who have children. Um, and we even know of a lot of individuals that work for us part-time um, or work from home. And I think it's important for employers to give females the opportunity to work from home from time to time or maybe even a couple times a week so that they can have that work-life balance. Businesses that females can do from home, again, it comes down to your skills and expertise. So for example, if you're doing freelance consulting based on any industry that you have some skills and expertise in, that would be a great opportunity to work from home because you can um, fit it into your own schedule, you can do it on your own time, and you could make um, quite a bit of money freelancing. Um, something else that I've seen a lot of women do and take on from home would be, again, any kind of sales type position where they're able to um, sell and make a commission, any kind of product. You're able to do that on your own time as well. So with sales, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it, but you don't have to put so much into it either. It kind of goes alongside how much time you have and how much you actually want to put into it. And so sales is a great way for women to still um, work and make money, but also be able to have a flexible schedule where they can work from home. Part-time businesses as well, or businesses that can be full-time or part-time, also for example, real estate. It's a very competitive market and um, a lot of work has to go into it, but again, it's a business where you can put as much work into it as you want, you can make your own hours, and you can still have a work-life balance if that's what your goal is. Um, and then finally, there are a lot of businesses these days, like I said, in a lot of corporations, in various industries, like even our own, where they will allow you to work part-time or they'll allow you to work from home. So if you're able to be lucky enough to find a position like that as a woman, I think that's a great opportunity as well. Ms. Priya, my next question is a little bit different, but uh, we pray for you for more success. But in case there is a time uh, you lost everything and you have to start again from zero. So from where you will start? What would be your method? I think this is a situation that a lot of entrepreneurs are faced with um, at some point in time, whatever it may be, which is um, a little bit of financial hardship. And so there are a few things you can do when you're faced with these situations. First of all, don't panic and don't give up. So just because you're faced with a little bit of financial hardship, it doesn't mean that it's the end of your business. It doesn't mean that you should panic and shut down or um, sort of um, paralyze yourself in terms of moving forward in your business. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it's important to sort of write down what your finances are, um, even work with an accountant and make a budget. So once you see what your finances are, what you're making in terms of revenue, what you're making in terms of net profit, and what your expenses and debts are, you can get a better picture of what's going on financially in your business. Um, and then you can move forward from that in the third step, you can make the budget. So you can look at your finances and you can actually create a budget as to how much you want to spend on a monthly or annual basis and how much you need to keep in the bank depending on your projections. Um, things like marketing, things like overhead expenses, those are important to see. Once you have all of that in place, you can then make a plan. So if you are in debt or if you do have loans you have to repay or certain expenses that are pending, you can actually come up with a plan to pay those off slowly on a monthly basis or an annual basis. And once you see that plan in place and you're able to stick to that plan, it'll actually really help you to move forward and get yourself out of the hole of debt or um, loans and expenses that a lot of entrepreneurs face. That's great. So, and Ms. Priya, you are, mashallah, very fit, you are very healthy. So, what is your daily routine, daily habit about business, about your life? As an entrepreneur, it's very difficult to separate your personal life from your business life. It really is because um, your business is your life. It's sort of, you, you might hear a lot of people sometimes say that your business is your baby. So um, it's like your child, you have to be there, you have to help it grow, you always have to be taking care of it. So it's difficult to separate your life personally from your business. However, it is very important to do that as well. So as easy as it is to get sucked into working all the time and to 
um, doing things in terms of your business and essentially becoming a workaholic, it's important to put parameters in place where you make yourself have a life outside of work. So things like um, taking care of your health, working out, socializing with friends, socializing with family, um, keeping in contact with the people that care about you. Although that takes time away from your business, what you'll see in the long term is taking that time away from your business will actually be beneficial for your business because when you go back into your business the next day, you're fresh and you're ready to execute and implement everything you need to do for your business. So it's sort of a situation where as an entrepreneur, you have to put those parameters in place for yourself in terms of work-life balance. That's great. Ms. Priya, if we speak about your age, you are a very young entrepreneur. Can you please tell about your sacrifices? Like what you sacrifice for this success? Besides sleep, because I, I've had to sacrifice sleep, um, there are a few sacrifices I've had to make um, to help my business grow and to have a business of my own. So a lot of time is sacrificed. A lot of time goes into building a business, especially when you're building it from scratch and when it's a startup. Um, time away from friends, time away from family, and time away from your personal life generally. As I said, it, it becomes very easy to get sucked into working all the time. In addition to that, I'm very far away from home. I'm very far away from my family. Um, my family actually is based in Canada and I'm here in Dubai. So I've had to sacrifice that distance and that time away from my family in order to succeed. And so with being an entrepreneur and um, being a business owner, it's why I said earlier on that it's important to have a passion for what you're doing because there are sacrifices you will have to make along the way and those sacrifices have to be worth it to you. And so um, yeah, those are some of the sacrifices I've had to make, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Thank you very much, Ms. Priya. Thank you very much to join Public TV. Thank you so much. Thank you to Public TV for giving me the opportunity to sort of share my story and share the views I have on being an entrepreneur and a business owner. Um, and I hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you very much for watching Public TV News. If you have also ideas and views like Ms. Priya, you can also contact to us. For more news and program, visit publictvmedia.com. And don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you very much.